fighters over Germany in a day. The Third Reich nurtures hundreds of deadly inventions. But to roll them out and win the war, they'd have to prioritize a mere handful of wonder weapons and mass produce these by the thousands. Thankfully, they lacked the production methods, materials, and the management required. Had Germany focused on defense, more strategically chosen her ammunition, and greatly increased production of these specific weapons, the outcome of the war might have been very different. That would have made invasion in 1944 very difficult, probably problematic. It made probably an invasion put off until 1945, and it's even conceivable that the war might have ended with the first atomic bomb being dropped on Germany instead of upon Japan. But that didn't happen. In 1945, the Nazi dream is finally destroyed by Allied bombs. Hitler and his adjutant Himmler commit suicide. At the Nuremberg trials, the Nazis face their own death sentence. The entire world now learns of the unspeakable horror of concentration camps and the depth of Hitler's dark dreams of domination. Dreams that would reach far beyond Europe. Attacks on America had been planned since 1939. In this inventive German newsreel, the Nazis focus abundant long-range air power on the United States as part of the planned America Bomber Project. Had the Germans been able to develop and deploy their, their America Bomber program to bring the war to the mainland of the United States, I think it might have had some impact on American strategic doctrine. Especially if these bombings had been nuclear. I mean, the only, the only result the German uh, Air Force could achieve was uh, to send a handful of very long-range bombers over the Atlantic and to drop, say, a dozen tons of bombs on, on New York or Washington. None of the German vengeance weapon programs, and certainly not the America bomber, would have had any chance of its intended effect without a nuclear weapon. In the end, Adolf Hitler never sets foot in New York. But the head of Hitler's secret science program does cross the Atlantic and changes the course of history. In 1945, as American and Soviet troops close in on Berlin, rocket genius Werner von Braun and a small group of his most loyal associates must choose their destiny. Surrender to the Russians, take cyanide, or align with the Allies. They choose America, and von Braun immediately is put in charge of the nation's infant missile program. The White Sands testing grounds in New Mexico where von Braun works on a new rocket and accomplishes his space dream after all. Escaping from the dark shadows of Penamunda, the creator of the deadly V-2 spends the rest of his life in loyal service to his new country. Thanks to von Braun, America wins the space race and puts a man on the moon. Yes, we see it. We see it. Here it is. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. 
Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. That is probably the principal achievement of, of, of the Pinamunda mines. Warner Ron Brown is undoubtedly the uh, most significant American rocket engineer of the century. Many would say he's the most significant rocket engineer of the world. So with the German scientists and knowledge that was brought back to the United States in the 1940s and early 1950s, you can make a very strong case, and I, nobody really disputes it, but there's almost a direct line from Pinamunda to the moon through Werner von Braun. Yet rockets aren't the only descendants of Hitler's secret science. In the 1950s, after decoding thousands of captured Nazi files, the United States Air Force performs classified flight tests of airframes that bear an eerie resemblance to the incredible dream machines on the runways and drawing boards of Peinemunde. The flying wing can carry a larger load faster, farther and with greater economy than conventional airplanes of similar size and power. Few men indeed can see the flying wing in operation without saying, the plane of tomorrow is flying today. Had it been in peacetime, perhaps if the war had not come on and they made the same effort, you would have seen German jet airliners before you would have seen British air jet airliners. Piloted futuristic deadly space shuttle named Silverbird, designed by German engineers Singer and Brett, is never built. But today's space shuttle and almost all modern rocket engines still use principles of its design. Parallel to uh, von Braun's work with the V2 and the type of fuels that he used in the V2, combustible fuels. Those engines were used subsequently in the United States and uh, by Bell and others. Uh, ultimately, the uh, much more sophisticated variations of them would even appear, for example, in the X-15. To this day, the rocket-powered high-altitude X-15 still holds the world record for the fastest speed ever reached by a piloted aircraft, taking mankind to the edge of outer space with every flight. There's no argument that Germany had some of the most talented weapons designers on the planet at the time, but they were failed by their leadership. Hitler really strongly hoped and believed that his scientists were going to develop a nuclear weapon. Even without atomic energy, the Nazis reached unprecedented heights of scientific advancement, all in the name of war. I think we're fortunate that, you know, the, the German inability to collate and focus its programs and having an impact on the Allied strategic bombing campaign is really a silver lining for democracy.